Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Ives 09-355-626B15. This is a package of four through bolts that would be used for a mailbox. Uh, they can be called through bolts. I also might know them as binding posts. Sex bolts is a very typical industry term as well. Um, I don't like the term sex bolt as much because the application of a sex bolt that you'll see versus this just being called a through bolt, um, they call them a sex bolt. But when I see sex bolts, I see the length of the female portion equal to from the underside of the head, basically, or from where it's going to make final contact with the face of the door. This is going to be installed through something, so we would want to you know, subtract that dimension have this run long enough, the female end, the shoulder of that, so that it would make contact with the inside face of the opposite side of the door. The, the advantage of that design, uh, and it very much relates to door closers, uh, that when you tighten the screw down, you're not crushing the door in because the design is such that the diameter of the female portion is greater than what's required to get the bolt through the door the male portion. That shoulder therefore runs long to the inside face so that if there's a hole here and I turn the bolt down, I can't crush the two door skins together. Um, and that's really where I see a, a sex bolt application. Um, I would probably just call these through bolts uh, is what I would likely call them because when I see through bolts, I um, don't see a function of that shoulder running the length that, that particular distance from the face of the door on one side to the inside face of the door on the other side. Um, you know, not the door thickness, you know, a thi one thickness of shy of that. Now that's my possibly made up definition of sex bolt, but when I, you know, see sex bolts and the way that that terminology is used and compare that to how the hardware is designed, um, that's what I notice. Um, so I'd probably call these through bolts. This is for a mailbox. It's not common to through bolt a mailbox through a door. Um, and, and admittedly, many times that I sell these small through bolt packages, we're using it for something else. Uh, not necessarily for a mailbox. They can be used for bolting other types of uh, equipment together, such as push and pull hardware. This would work out pretty well uh, with a little bit of modification. If you wanted to take a pull handle that's mounted to a plate and then a push plate on the other side and bolt all of that package together. Um, I've also had people use these uh, to install door chains, uh, crash chains through a door. A crash chain should always be installed. And depending on the manufacturer, they probably already offer <clears throat> a through bolt package for that. Uh, for a crash chain application. Uh, the term binding post, if you were to look that up as well, you'll see the similar concept of uh, a male portion and a female portion. It'll look a lot like this. So why would you through bolt a um, male, a male slot uh, through your door? Well, let's talk about that now. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Well, first and foremost, why you would through bolt a mail slot through a door is because you don't want exposed fasteners. Uh, the fasteners are exposed, but you don't want the means by which to remove those fasteners to be readily obvious to someone. A number two Phillips screwdriver uh, would probably be the tool of choice to remove those. Um, so through bolting, it prevents that sort of tampering. I've also had people um, have a mail slot cut out in a door, and the hole that they're working with could be from a mail slot that's from the mid 20th century. All of the material available today, the cutout may not be exactly what they need and what they have is slightly large. Not too large so as to be larger than the outside dimension of the new mail slot, but too large to prevent them from running any screws through the outside trims and then into metal clad, fiberglass, obviously wood, steel, so you can kind of salvage the day by using through bolts if you were to take the approach of, you know, I'm just going to get the through bolts on there and I'm going to tighten them good uh, so that the mail slot really doesn't move. 
Um, you know, also in those instances, sometimes the male uh, slot, once the bolts are through the door, can kind of rest on one edge of the cutout, and it will help, you know, discourage the male slot from shifting or moving at all when it's when it's used. Um, through bolting is always a preferred means to secure something to the door. Um, they hardly ever are, um, and I can't tell you a measurable advantage as to why you might uh, want that to be the case. But when it's through bolted, the mail slot does become an integrated component of the door. It's secured uh, as if it was a part or a part of the greater assembly of the door rather than just two pieces of hardware that are surface mounted. Um, so there might be some sort of advantage in your, uh, you know, the way you think about that. Um, I can't really say that, you know, um, the standard method of securing has any sort of uh, inherent defect. There must be a reason why you're looking, why the, why the inherent method doesn't work for you. And maybe the through bolt will. Let's switch to the screen view and let's take a closer look at some supporting information. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Here is the item that we are looking at, and speaking of that, let's take a look at some images that we have linked to down below. There's the packaging, contents removed, and then a couple of photos of the uh, oval head male portion. I'm going to go with 832 on this thread type, the other end of it. The female portion. Okay. Now, extended description information used on the 620 and 621 letterbox plates. Ives has been making those mail slots for decades, several decades. Um, pack of four, when you order one, we're going to send you one package of four. And they say that it's nickel clear coated brass. Um, that would be another reason to use these, I suppose. Assuming that the screws that come with a 620 or a 621 are not brass-based, um, it may be advantageous. It would certainly be advantageous um, if you were installing brass fasteners down to a brass base material. Um, I wouldn't make a. I wouldn't argue a position of galvanic corrosion or galvanic rusting when you have two disparate base materials touching each other in a humid environment. Um, but these are brass, so there would be an advantage to having something non-ferrous in an exterior application. Um, I don't, again, I don't know if the screws that come with the 620, 621 are non-ferrous. Um, We'd want to review that further if we were going to argue that. Now, this will be available in other finishes. Let's take a look at what those other finishes are. Okay, so we have polished brass, uh, 605 polished brass, 613 oil rub bronze, and then apparently the only other finish is indeed our 626 satin chrome. Um, you know, they use the same part number for satin nickel, which would be completely expected that they would do that. Um, you know, there's going to be such such a minor difference between the two finishes. Uh, it would it would not be normal or standard for a manufacturer to call in two different finishes on a fastener uh, head. Now, there's a link below this video here to the manufacturer's page. When we click on that, we can pull up not only all of the Ives products that we sell by means of this horizontal navigation as seen here, but also a link to the manufacturer's website as well as a link to the full product catalog. I would suggest reviewing the full product catalog um, from the perspective that you might just uh, find other things from Ives that you uh, didn't know they made. Okay. The point of showing that also is to get to the 620, 621 mail slots that are hopefully in here. I don't see them in the catalog. There they are. So the 620 is a magazine size. And apparently that's the only one they have on the most current catalog. They have dropped the rest of the line from their offering. That's, that's unfortunate. Ives used to have 
few decades ago, a lot more than just one choice. Different sizes. They had uh, single flap, double flap. They had the one with the hood on the inside. They had uh, spring. They had gravity. Um, that's that's too bad. Uh, the evolution of Ives as a company in terms of what they are known for and what they sell has greatly evolved over the last um, 40 years. Um, and I can uh, even say the last century, if you were to look at the catalog, the two archival catalogs that we have here from over 120 years ago, basically, uh, Ives was really known as a manufacturer of window hardware. And they stu still do make sash locks and sash lifts, but not nearly in the variety that they once made. Uh, the 601 is a sleeve. If you're doing this in any door, a wood door or a metal door, I would very much encourage that you order a sleeve because it will finish and clean off the inside portion of the door that you've cut through uh, in order to accommodate the uh, mail slot feature. Okay, This is linked below this video uh, as a cut sheet as well. Let's wrap up this video on camera. If you are enjoying this video, please click thumbs up or like, and also please consider subscribing to our channel. Let's move on to the rest of the video. Some of those other part numbers from Ives mail slots were 620, 621, 625. Um, there may have been a 626, although that would be an odd part number to use for a part number. Uh, they do. They well. They have. <laughs> they had a 622, uh, a 625. So the point is, is if you're looking up old information, you will probably come across those part numbers. I said it's odd because 625 and 622, those are BHMA designations for finishes. You know, so if the Ives item is made of brass, it would be an Ives 625 and a 625 finish. Generally, you won't see. The small letter X used in a part number either. It's because we would use the small letter, the lowercase X, to separate components of a part number. Full mortise hinge, you know, the bearing, the series, X series, X size, X special features, X more special features, X hand, X finish, dash manufacturer. Okay. Uh, also about Ives is the reason I think that they've gone away from the mail slot residential hardwares, they're under the Allegiant umbrella and they provide nowadays compared to two, three, four decades ago, uh, 10 decades ago, um, they've phased away from residential hardware pretty much, pretty, pretty solidly. And what they now do is supply absolutely commercial hardware, uh, absolute hardware used in commercial settings, uh, pivots push and pull hardware, um, ladder pulls, they didn't, you know, so you're going to see aluminum storefront, you know, hollow metal doors, architectural commercial applications, you know, just 25 years ago, Ives, you weren't buying commercial pivots from Ives or ladder poles because they were a residential hardware manufacturer, but a legion who's, ha who has under its umbrella names like Schlage and Von Duprin and LCN, um, Steelcraft, I'm sure they have a wood door manufacturer, zero weather stripping. Uh, they need, obviously, a way to hang the door. They can sell you the lock, sell you the closer, sell you the exit device, sell you the door, sell you the frame. They need to be able to sell you the hinge as well. And that's where Ives comes in. Anyway, if you have any questions on the Ives, this is their part number 09-335-626B15 or any other Ives product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you. Again, thank you for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click thumbs up, please subscribe, and maybe even send the video to someone that you know. Thank you.